computer. There we go. I got it. Working. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> so we are beginning. And tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to take two images that were in the last competition. And the judge made his comments and, uh, and went through them. And uh, so we're going to take those. I'm going to try to replicate what the judge was saying, because he we didn't make any changes uh, on that competition night. But I'm going to try to replicate what I remember him saying. And then we're going to ask Charlie uh, Rath, who is one of the images, and Steve Green, who's the other image, to discuss a little bit about those images. So we'll start with Charlie's image. And I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All right. I assume everyone can see the screen. Yeah. And this was Charlie's image. And some of the comments that the judge made were about the lightness and darkness and things like that. But uh, Charlie, would you tell us what your intention was with this photograph? Because you made it and you sent me one that was a different version of it. So go ahead and tell me about it. Well, in this particular version, it wasn't my first reaction to the, what I captured. Mm -hmm. um, my original kind of first pass on the image was had a darker background. Mm -hmm. And in terms of controlling the light that was hitting the hitting the the this tree stump that um, had it showed a fair amount of weathering and bleaching and the this light, is, this the is light in, in when I was seeing this, the background was not this dark. So this is this was my first pass. Okay. Um, and the the wood really is more. I think the the bleaching that I saw when I was there, and this is in front of a sand dune at Zmodowski, uh State Beach that runs more or less east west. So the sun was to the right, the upper right, coming down, and and the tree stump was, you know, kind of partially shaded, but but there was still light hitting it directly from the sun. It was around nine thirty in the morning, um, but the the background compared to what this image that I have here that was submitted to the competition, it was the background is much. The shadow is not as quite as dark as it actually was to my yeah. eye when I was making the capture. Yeah, um, I was kind of at the at the point where I was working on this image. I want I was really interested in the uh, the bleaching of the wood, um, and so I spent probably more time worrying about how that looked than what shade of gray to black the the background was mm -hmm. and. Um, I probably, you know, I, I think that based pretty much on the feedback from from the meeting, he he spent a fair amount of time looking at the at the the stump and thinking about you know from where it came and uh, this happens to be not very far from the mouth of one of the major creeks that come out of the Santa Cruz Mountains, um, and I'm pretty certain it's a redwood stump. It has an awful lot, it. it it doesn't have any any deep tap root. It's it has roots reminiscent of a of the way the redwoods go. Uh, and but his his impression was that he wanted to see the shade the shadows be darker in the background. Right. I mean, I don't think he he wasn't. I don't think he. I think he was happy with the the brightness, although he, he didn't specifically say so. But I think that the that. I don't know, and, and to, for for me, I, I I like this version of the stump itself. Um, I haven't gone back and revised the image to retain that and darken the background. the The other image that I made, the stump was much grayer and not not as bleached looking. So, I'm I'm sorry. This is like I like what I did with the wood, 
And I think it would have done okay if the background in the competition, if the background had been just a bit darker. Yeah. So anyway, so that's kind of, that's what I took away from the competition and his comments was yeah, make, make the background darker. And then, you know, it would have been a good, a much better image. Right. And At least for the, for the purposes of the competition. I mean, right. He missed, I, he missed the year intention was really to show the bleaching of the wood too. And uh, but the darker background would have made that stand out a little bit better. But <clears throat> so let's begin with that. Let's start with uh, making the background darker. And the easiest thing to do is with this image is to go ahead and do a select subject. And this is a pretty complicated image from uh, selecting that uh, burl of uh, root there, but it's gonna do a decent job and you'll have to modify it. So I'll just show you. So I'm hitting this over here, the selection tool, the quick selection tool. It gives me this dialog box up top, which says select subject. And I'm gonna click select subject and it's gonna try to select that root. Now you can see it's not gonna do a perfect job. And part of the reason it's not doing a perfect job is because the background and the foreground are too close together. And your eye wants to go automatically. Uh, we are, as humans, we want contrast in things. And so does this filter. <laughs> so the selection tool does too. So let's start with, and I'll make the selection tool a little bigger. It's pretty small right now. And I'm going to make the hardness about 50%. And what that means is it's going to try to find an edge. And it's not going to be perfect. We'll have to uh, mess around with it a little bit. But we'll start with that. So I'm going to come over here to this side. And I'm going to click. And I'm clicking just below it where I want that edge, where I think that edge is, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to pick up all of this root. And I need to paint over top of, if we lack of a better term, which is selecting all these things. And I'm just going to go ahead and select this dark area down here, too, because we can make that darker as well. And then I'm going to come over into this and up into that. And there was a little dot there. I don't know if you noticed that I just ran it over. And I've got a pretty good selection. Up here, there's a little mystery area. And the reason I call it a mystery area is because I'm not sure exactly what that is until I blow it up. So let's enlarge that significantly. Okay, so now you can see there is a piece of root there. And it didn't get it because look at the difference between the background and that piece of root. They're so close that the selection tool can't handle it. So I'm going to take a much smaller size and I'm going to do, I'm clicking. I'm not dragging. I was dragging before. I'm only clicking because I don't want it to select any of the background. Okay. And you can see right up in here, there's a little bit of root there. And I'm selecting that. Um, do a, that. What's there's your... a triangle it, almost in the center, um, the bright, and then it's. Uh, it. I think. I think that it's. It's. You're missing the that little. There's an indent down. Um, this tip, you mean? Uh, to the left, just slightly and down. Oh, there's a little bit of a hole. Yeah, that, that little V there is part of the background. Correct. So I was going to get to that, but I can do it right now. So what you need to do there is it's already selected this area, but we don't want that part selected. So we have to hit Alt or uh, Command in a, on a Mac and then click, and that'll give us part of that. And let's blow it up even more. 
it's going to start pixelating because this is not the original image. And let me see if I can. OK, that's about as close as we're going to get. Now let's see if we can get that little tip there, too. Yeah. So I have a question. When you're when you've got, say, a quarter inch wide cursor circle. Yeah. Are you using the edge or the center? I am trying to go up to the edge. So I'm not using that crosshair. I am going up here and letting it say, oh, I see it over there. So you have to be just below where you really want to so, be. So go right up to the right uh, just a little more. I think that's yep. to the rock. Yep. So which part of the cursor are you using, actually? So see how, here's, can you see the cursor? Yeah, yeah it's a nice circle. All right. And so I'm not going to go all the way up to that edge. I'm going to go just below it. And I'm going to click. And I'm going to click. And okay. it gave me some background here. So I'm going to try Alt. And click it out. Yeah. And okay. take it back out. So you're really using the edge, not the center, not the crosshair. Correct. Got it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And let me get this little corner there. Yeah, see, it's it's a horse race uh, <laughs> sometimes of how to get it to be happy with what you're doing. But anyway, scan all that edge. There are other ways to do this, and I would show another way to do it in a, a different. Uh, oh, here's background right. That's here. a big gap. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see if it'll handle this well. Are you dragging now? So I will drag. I'm going to Alt or Command, and I'm going to drag down, and I'm going to stay in the center. And it decided, oh, I I want to, all of this, too. But we don't want all this, so that's why I'm... And you can see I'm inside of that area. Yeah, it's a little squirrely. Yeah. And it's it's going to be squirrely because it's trying to automatically do this. So, oh, you can do it, Matt. Can you drag it man manually at the dots? No, uh, you choose a different selection tool, and I could I could get down to a single pixel. You get down to the pixels, right? Yeah. So there is you, a way to, but you'd have to do it manually to to be able to be that. Exactly. You need the polygon lasso tool. And so it won't let you mix and match the, that technique with this tool. Yes, this specific. yes, you can, but that's oops, that's oops. A, that's a whole nother class. So I'm I'm not. <laughs> I'm not okay. What if you what if you change the contrast first? Does that or for the whole picture? Does that change the algorithm? How well it selects? It could help. Uh, I tried so, that earlier today. And it did not help much in this case. So, well, so I was wondering if it actually does anything or is it working against the raw and it doesn't care what you are seeing? No, it does care. It does. Okay. Yeah, it does care. And I'm going to try to see it's not giving me that little piece. Well, I'm going to have to give you a little tutorial in uh, doing this another way. So <laughs> here's here's the other way. The polygon lasso tool, I just chose that. And now I'm going to do this, and I am going to select, uh, no. Nope. Oh, we'll just blow it away completely. You have to click the add uh, icon, I think, up on the top left. Yeah, it's in the add mode already. Looks like it's not. Uh, there is no add mode uh, right the Add now. mode is the one with the two squares merging together. Yeah. Oh, add two selection. Okay. Let's see if it'll let me. And now your pointer is actually that little pointer. Yep. Got it. Okay. And... It'll let me do, I can do, like I said, one this pixel is, at a This time. is really pixelish. Yeah. 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 And how long is that going to take me to do that, guys? <laughs> if I was doing the whole thing that way. But it gave me a pretty good, you know, edge. Yeah. Okay. That worked nicely. 
I'm going to do this last little piece here, uh, but keep in mind, you guys can refine this on your own when you have a situation like this as much as you want. Yeah, forever and ever. Yeah, so I'll go back to the quick selection tool. In the old days, there was no quick selection tool, and I did hours of <laughs> of this little detail uh, polygon lasso tool kind of thing. And there's, you can see over here to the left, there's a section that I didn't get. I'll try real quickly, but I won't spend much time on it. Yeah. Oops. Because it'll hop to the background. So you, I would really use the polygon lasso tool there. All right. So really what the judge had a problem with more than anything uh, is the background uh, and that he wanted the background to be darker so that this would stand out more. So that's simple. Now that I've selected this tree stump, I'm going to go up here to select inverse. So now I'm selecting only the background, not the tree stump. And we're going to spend most of our time in both of these images. We're going to do a lot of brightness and contrast and dodge and burn and lastly sharpen. <clears throat> so we'll go uh, image adjust, brightness and contrast. And I'm going to turn the brightness down. And in my case, I'm going to go way down because I think it really gives Charlie the better look for what he his intention was. And then contrast, let's play with contrast because remember, we're only affecting the background. So the contrast, it grays it out or it blacks it out. So this is all personal taste, right? So I'm going to choose a spot right here. And uh, I'm going to say, okay. Now we've got lots of contrast with the background. And uh, I'm going to now go back and do select inverse again. And now it's just the tree stump. And let's go back to the image adjust or adjustments. I always say adjust, but brightness and contrast. So let's bring the brightness down because um, once again, I'm going by the judge's comments, but Charlie, you probably, you might've been happy with this, huh? Because you were trying to go for a kind of a high key bleached. Look. Well, I was going more bleached. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I he, I don't recall him saying anything to me or to the, the group at the time about the brightness level of the stump. That no. may have he may have said something in the at the time he was judging it, but I I never heard him say that. So I'm yeah, I, he, didn't, I didn't get that kind of feedback from what I heard. But yep. what I heard him say, besides the background, that he was looking at the uh darks and lights in general, too. Okay, so, yeah. All right. But let's let's just look at that a little bit. I'm gonna bring the the brightness down a little bit. I'm going to bring the contrast up a little. And that changes the look of it. Still has a lot of the high key elements, but it changes the look. Yeah, it's got more depth or texture or something now. Right? It, it, it increases what the texture uh, is able to pull out. Now, mm. I'm glad you said that, Will, because that leads me to my next step. So I'm going to say OK to this. And the next step is going to be dodging and burning. And if you've ever worked in a dark room, which a lot of us have, uh, we know what dodging and burning is, but it's essentially making the darks darker and the lights lighter. So over here, we have the tool. It looks like a hand with a making the OK sign. And I'm going to do, choose the burn tool. And it's key to know these are the tools on the left-hand side. The options for those tools are in the top. So I'm going to, it's 
it saw it chose shadows, but I also have midtones and highlights there. But let's start with shadows. And I have the exposure set to 15. And you'll find very quickly that in dodging and burning that high numbers are not your friend. You want to be in the <laughs> low numbers. So are they additive? So if you go over a same area many times, it builds it up. Is. It's absolutely additive. Okay. And so, and we'll show that right here. So I'm going to do this edge here, which is a little bit, it's towards the middle to the dark, this top edge, and I'm just going to darken it. Now you can see what I'm doing. And that always is going to give you extra depth. And if I go into a mid-tone area, it's barely going to affect it. Where it's going to affect it is where the shadows really are. And so I'm going to go along those lines looking for shadows. The other thing it does, and I'll show you on this little piece right here, I'll blow this up some more. It's going to give you more texture too. So I'm going to switch to mid-tones just for this area just to show you. And now there's more texture in those shapes. And I'll go over here and do a little bit. And the big place where it'll show up is here. So now I'm getting more texture in this. It should not be affecting highlights, right? Because it's set on midtones. And I come back and affect shadows more too. But look at all the texture I'm getting out of here. And I'm not going to do the whole image, but I'm going to do a section of it so that we can look at it and compare. And once again, this is completely subjective, right? Charlie may not like this. <laughs> this may not have been what he was going for, but I'm just like saying the overall darks and lights, what you can accomplish. And the title of this uh, session is Range of Change and How Far You Can Take It. So, all right, let's look. So we've gotten more texture in this area and I did a little bit up here. So let's go back to the original image and look at that and then we'll switch back and forth. There's the original and that's the new image. So you can take this, you can spend hours on this if you want to. And you can change the textures to really stand out tremendously. And uh, our friend Ansel Adams did a lot of that. He spent, if you look at, if you've ever seen the negative for Moonrise at, uh, where was he? New Mexico, somewhere in New Mexico. If, you, if you've seen that negative and the initial print, it was washed out. The whole thing was washed out. And he dodged and burned that entire uh, image to, to make one of his most famous images. So, uh, so let's look at, that's the before and that's the after. Uh, so this is just trying to show techniques, but dodge and burn is critical. Now the last technique I'm gonna show you, and by the way, you notice I kept the selection here. So when I dodge and burn, it won't affect outside of that. I can come and I can burn. Let's go up here. I can make this, uh, I'll make the size of uh, the tool bigger. Oops, wrong tool. Uh, I'll make the size, okay, it's 25. So what I can do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to burn along this edge, but I'll now I'll put that 
uh, plus sign that's the crosshairs in the center of that. I'm going to drag it across the center, but you'll notice it won't change. Whoops, those are midtones. I need shadows. It won't change the background at all. I can come up in here. It won't affect it. It's only going to affect inside the selection area, which is great. The reason I kept the selection area is so I don't have to be perfect. So that gives you an idea. And then the last thing I want to do, and this is the easiest thing in the world to do. So I'm going to come over to my tools again. And this triangle is a sharpen tool. And I've got a blur, a sharpen, and a smudge tool. And sometime a different class will look at smudge tools because it's kind of cool. But uh, anyway, I've got the sharpen tool there. And that's way too big, so let's make it smaller. Hardness for sharpen does not have to be very high because you want to try some and see what you like. So I'm going to come in here and I'm sharpening this. And it's going to increase the amount of texture I get. And you can't go, if you go too far, you're going to get. Um, JPEG artifacts and pixelization. Like that's too far where I just hit that. So I'm going to back that off. But it creates a nice increase in texture just from simply using the sharpen tool. Any final final comments, Charlie? No, um, I I would uh, I approve of the changes. Um, whether <laughs> whether I'm sitting on my own by myself, I'm. Uh, I'd have to I'd have to spend more a lot more time making decisions about these smaller areas, and I yeah. I yeah. tend to look at things more globally, and I guess. The, the details are where the, the real bang for the it is. is so You're scary. getting the bang for the buck in those details. I'm running the sharpen over this section right here. And uh, you're going to get a lot out of the details. So, but it's all with brightness and contrast, uh, dodge and burn, although we didn't really need to dodge anything, although we could have dodged some of the whites because judges are particularly fond of telling us when we're blowing out something. Right. Yeah, and, that's right. I, I spent a lot of time backing off on the brightness. Yeah. So yeah, that's even as bright as this was, I my first pass was much brighter. Right. Right. And it, clearly it was blown out and you had to go backwards. And I mean, I lot you would lose all the all of the texture and the detail, the the, sure. the cracks. Right. Wall disappeared when it got too bright. So I, I did play with your image, which is what I sent to you. And that's what I ended up uh, when I spent, I didn't spend that much time on it because I had to do it, prep it for this, but uh, that's kind of my take, but it's your image. It's not my image. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I would go like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Eric, um, can I mean, you going show back, a graph of the image that you uh, generated? I'm sorry. You, the histogram. What do you? Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, black and white histogram. Uh, yeah, we can pull one up. Is that what you want to look at? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I might have to go up here to find it. Yeah. So that's the histogram that's showing. Ah. So it's barely within range over here in the highlights. Uh, it's actually a little off, but the darkness is okay because we still got some detail in the shadow. We've blown out just a few things, not much though, but it's definitely on the edge. A judge would, would definitely want to have us knock down some of these highlights. 
Yeah, it, and the, the reason I was kind of interested in it, and maybe it's because of the background, uh, it seems like you don't have any real black blacks, and that's what the histogram shows. Right, right. And uh, it just depends on how how much background, how dark you want to go in the background. So this histogram shows it yeah. differently. Yeah. Because you're now the highlights are gone, so we're okay there. And we're leaning more towards the blacks. Yeah. In the image. So. Yeah, you can see that contrast in the one that you did. Your your version. Yeah. Well, my my yeah. only comment about going for I gotta have that dark dark black is that in real life it was not dark black. So no, uh, of course. I really yeah. didn't well, I didn't want to go there as an artistic statement. I I you know, yeah. it wasn't a black background. No, and, no. and and I have a very uh negative um memory from an a competition where I submitted an image an image where I did exactly what you're saying. I had a really black background. Yeah. And he accused me of trying to trick him, the oh. judge. <laughs> so I it left me with a real I was I was really pissed off when he said it. I mean, yeah. when I heard, when his when I got the critique, because I wasn't trying to fool anybody. I mean, I was just making an image, and right. and and it was sort of like putting a motivation on me that I didn't really appreciate. Sure, but 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 that that overreact. I mean, I've overreacted to that comment, and now I tend to over brighten the backgrounds yeah. as opposed to darkening them. Yeah. So that's part of you know at least my interaction with the images is colored by that initial you know sure. and it's from several it was about four years ago so yeah you know, it what is what it is but well, um it's a cool image and all that texture and it gives you a lot to work with and it really does show you that the range that you can put if that's what the starting image was and you can get to Charlie. This is your your ending image on the other on the far uh, spectrum. You can do so much. That's all the same image, you know. It's right. It's worth. Yeah, no, I I have probably three or four different versions of different brightnesses and lightnesses. Yeah, yeah. and then then the difficulty is okay. Which one do I submit? Right, of, right, right. It becomes a conundrum on that end as well. Okay, let's switch to uh, Steve's image. Thank you uh, for all this work. No, and, of course. And the answer is you need to know that specific judge's taste, right? Yeah, so you're you're shooting yourself in the foot trying to you know judge that. Uh, we have Becky Jaffe as a judge coming up in two weeks. Becky is is wicked smart. She knows all kinds of things. She has a uh, like a some kind of science background, but she's also an excellent photographer, blah, blah, blah. So she's going to be picky about some things, but she's also likes the emotion in a photograph and she looks for that as well. Uh, so it's hard to, to know enough about the judges unless you know them personally, uh, how they're going to react. But right. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Steve's image. And I'm going to close yours, Charlie. Thank you. Maybe we should start a little thing where you keep track of all the judges and give us hints on <laughs> <laughs> the cheat sheet. Right. Exactly. But, there, but there's so many categories, and you know, you it's hard to keep track of all of their biases and yeah. and their leanings for. Oh, well, it's a challenge. You what one of the things you can do is find out when they judged before and go see what they picked. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. could, yeah, right. Uh, is the judging inf information for the judge on the website from like a year ago or no? I don't think I've seen that. I you can find the images at one, but who judged them? Not um, we used to list the judge on the result page. I don't know if they're still doing that. Yeah, we'll have to see. Okay. It'll be in the calendar, but I'm not sure how far back you can go on the calendar. Yeah. On the other hand, if you ask me, I happen to have since 2011 all the payments we made. 
So I know when the last time somebody <laughs> can. <laughs> so if, if you want that info, just let me know. The treasurer has secret information. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I can Steve, tell lots of things, but only till 2011. So Steve, tell me how you happened upon this image and uh, what your intentions were. Well, this is a, a home in our neighborhood that that I I think just a beautiful home. Yeah. And and they do a very beautiful job uh, uh, lighting it and decorating it for Christmas. And we I'm I'm in the uh, novice group, and we were working on the the, the assignment was a panorama, and this is actually a panorama of six shots. Oh. No. Um. And which creates some of the curvature to the house. Yeah, yeah. He did comment on 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 the curvature, um, mm -hmm. uh, and he, as I recall, he wanted. Uh, I think he he wanted a little bit more um, uh, brightness in the in the grass in the lawn in front, mm -hmm. uh, which looks pretty. Bright to me right now it looks brighter than it did in the competition view, mm -hmm. and um, and a little bit more contrast I think in some of the the the, the sides as I recall. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's where where we were. That yeah, that's what I remember as well. So that's that's perfect, and that's that's a beautiful house. Is that yeah, Scatos? Is it Los Gatos or Saratoga? Where is it? Uh, it's in, in Willow Glen. Oh, Willow Glen. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah, I like the house. Yeah, I love it. All right. So let's start with, um, by the way, the first thing I always do or should do is duplicate the layers. So if you see layers over here on the right-hand side, you'll see three actually. But the duplicate layer is the top layer and that's your original down here. So I'm going to be, that way we can flip back and forth to here's what it looked like before, and now here's what it looks like. All right, so here's the image. And the first thing that you talked about, Steve, was that the judge said something about the curvature. So I'm going to close this histogram, by the way, because I don't think we need it. But so what I've done is I come over here to the marquee tool in Tech of regular rectangular mar marquee, and I just drug around the image and let go. Now the whole image is selected. So what you may not know is that you can change the angle of the image. So I'm going to see that post is a little bit off. And this mm -hmm. post, because of the panorama that Steve shot, so it's not perfectly straight up and down, and we know that in real life it is. So I want to transform that and make it straight up and down. So how am I going to do that? All I have to do is hit Control or Command T, and that puts little boxes all the way around this. And then I'm going to hit my right click to get skew. So this is out of skew right now. And this is all recorded so you can uh, view it at your own speed. So here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this to the right until, and, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't talk about the guides. You saw me magically over here in the rulers section, you can put a guide anywhere you want. You can just drag it over. And from the top down, you can drag guides and put them wherever you want. And that gives me my 90 degree angle to work with. So I was in the process of skewing this. So I'm looking at that and let's enlarge it a little bit so I can look at that column. And that is not quite all the way. So I'll have to reduce it down a little bit. And he's a tiny bit more to the right. Okay. 
Now I'm going to go over to the other side and do the same thing over there. And I'm still in SKU mode, which was your right click. I'll, I'll just show you again. SKU is right there. You can also use distort uh, perspective if you need to fix perspective, a lot of other things, but we're just going to talk about SKU. So I'll re-click that. And now I'm going to pull this column over. And let's take a look. And a tiny bit more. Okay. All right, so it's transformed. So now our verticals throughout the whole thing are should be perfect. So you click enter and it saves that image that way. And I'm gonna click off of the marquee tool. Sometimes what you'll find is that if you pull it too far, it may create a little white space here at the bottom or the top and you'll have to clone those areas. All right. Does that fix horizontal also, or is that a separate? Yeah, no, you can fix it horizontally as well. Uh, that's so, not right. skew though, right? That's not what? Is horizontal skew? It can still be skew, sure. So my steps I'm looking at are pretty good, so I'm not gonna mess with it, but uh, let's just, Take an example, and you don't have to do the whole image, right? I could just I could do that with just this area here. So I'm going to do Control T of that area. I'm going to get rid of some of these uh, guides so they don't interfere with what we're looking at. And that's how you get rid of guides, by the way. You just drag them over into the magic ruler where you, they came from. And that's one of the downsides of Photoshop, by the way. Is there's so many things that are hidden. <laughs> How in the heck, you know, uh, the first time I learned rules, I, ru the uh, guides that are in the rulers, I went, wow, that's pretty cool. But I had been working with Photoshop for a couple of years before I knew that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so this is just a section of the image. So I'm going to do Control T or Command T. And I'll let me get rid of those last couple of guides. OK, I have to go back and choose Control T again. And skew. And now you're talking about horizontally. Let's say I wanted to move it up instead of out, right? Because I've got four corners to work with. I can do that. Now, here's what it's going to do it's going to make these bricks uneven, right? Nice. So I would have to come back here and clone those if I wanted to do that. It's also stretched my bushes out down here a bit. So mm -hmm. let's see. If I wanted to do it, I'd have to do some extra work. But so I'm going to do Control Z, put it back where it was. All right. So, Steve, I agree with you. I think the grass is actually fine, personally. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so what we're going to look at is I'm going to do something that I did with Charlie's image. And I'm going to come up here to the selection tool, quick selection tool, and select subject. Now, we will all be surprised that it does a pretty good job of selecting the house and does not select the bushes. Uh, but we have to fix a few things, right? So I want to get rid of all this part of the selection. And in doing so, I'll have to push Alt. And that gets rid of it out of the selection. And I need to go around this little edge. So I need to come close, but not touch it. And then I'll have to go back and refine that a little bit. And I was just dragging it. Well, actually, it didn't do too bad. Uh, I want this one little light here, or actually three little lights here. So I'll come back and click on the lights. 
I don't care about the wire, but I could guess I could grab that too. And now I'm going to check the edges of the image to make sure we got everything we wanted. Oh, we missed a whole bunch of lights up here. So I can bring those in. Like I said, it's not important about getting the wire, I don't think. Are you holding down any key like alt or I'm just I'm just moving it to the spot and clicking. You and, missed one. And the quick selection. <laughs> thank, yes, dear. Thank you. Betty, if just, you look the, if you look at the top left, yeah. you'll see a brush with a plus sign. Uh, yes. And and that's showing you that yeah. you are in the setting where you're adding to your selection. If Correct. If um, you click yeah. on the one on the right that with the negative, that means you're taking away from your current selection. Right. Oh, and, so many places to look. <laughs> yeah, a lot of places to look, definitely. Yeah, there are. Photoshop loves to do that to you. And the takeaway, you can use that and create a, a minus sign, but I just hold down the Alt key and do it that way. Are you holding down the Alt key continuously? No, only when you're taking away. Okay. Does that go in reverse too? If you're in the takeaway selection and you press Alt, does it add? Yes. Okay. It, it reverses it. So Alt means opposite then. Alt means what? What'd you say, Will? Opposite. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to make it absolutely perfect, but I will. Uh, There's a way to click and draw a line, right? So it. Yeah, um, that's the polygon lasso tool. I'm not. Oh, gonna, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to use that. And Got it. This is fine for what we're talking about. And then, what my take on this, uh, Steve, was I'm going to select the sidewalk too as being part of something that needs to be part of the house and partly part um, brightened up. So okay. I'm gonna pick all of this and I'm gonna get a bigger bigger uh, brush to use. And I'm gonna select these handles here as well, but I don't want all that bush, so I hit the Alt key. And you can see that inside the circle, it turned to a minus. Mm -hmm. OK. All right, so there's my house. Uh, Steve's dream house. He's moving in next week. <laughs> and uh, the current owner, by the way, volunteered to continue paying the taxes on it. So I, I really appreciate that. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's the killer part. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. So I've got the sections that I was thinking about needed to be um, selected for brightness. So once again, image adjustments, brightness and contrast. Now, be selective with this. Think about it and look at it and think about what you what you're doing because you can easily go too far. So you don't want to go too far. So I just want to give it a little nudge. And then look at what contrast will do. Contrast, you can see how it's darkening it if it gets too much contrast. But a little bit of that isn't bad, in my personal opinion, because it's all subjective, as we know. And so I'm going to say, OK. Now, I'm going to also do something with this background. Uh, 
I think that it could be darker, so we'll do select inverse, and we'll do image adjust, brightness and contrast, and I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit on it, and contrast a little bit, but I'm also going to go into Camera Raw, which you'll also recognize as the develop tool in um, Lightroom. And once we get here, keep in mind, I've, I've selected the background, right? It doesn't show it here, but that's what I'm working with. So take a look at the sky, and I'm going to hit Dehaze. And I'm going to increase Dehaze. And it's going to put a little more color in the sky and liven that up a little bit. Um, and I'm going to say OK. All right. Uh, so now let's look at something else. Let's look at, I'm going to. I'm going to keep my selection reversed because we're going to look at this lawn area. And I'm going to do dodge and burn. And I'm going to do dodge in order to lighten it up. So I am going to do a pretty big brush so I can lighten up the lawn. I agree with Steve. I don't think the lawn needs to do anything. But since the judge said, I'm going to listen to the, what the judge said. And we'll go from there. Uh, we're in the midtones right now, which is going to pull out the uh, a lot of those leaves. And so I'm going to drag it across the bush and the lawn. And I'm going to do it again twice. And look at it compared to the left side. Yeah. It's just a little, but it's enough to make it work for what the judge was thinking about anyway. I probably would not have done it at all, but um, maybe it helps. OK, so now we've done that. Now it's time for a little trickery. I'm going to uh, turn off that selection. We brighten the house. We brighten the lawn. And what I'm going to do is, you'll notice that those candles are not lit, but they will be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here into my polygon lasso tool. And it's got three pixels of feather. And the feather is just the softness around the edge of the selection. And you'll see what it does. And it the number of pixels of feather is going to be dependent on your original image. So this is just a JPEG that I pulled off of, of the, our website, so it's low res. But if you have a 4,000 by 3,500 uh, pixel image, you're going to need a bigger feather to create a soft edge. So with this, I'm going to choose... this. And so I've made this kind of shape here. And what you don't realize is I'm going to then take that little shape and I'm back to the marquee tool here, by the way, so I can move this shape. And I'm going to move it. I decided when I looked at your image, see that the little glow for those uh, candles would be great right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click inside of that. And I'm going to layer via copy. Oh my. So I'm copying that little section. And you can see it kind of went away. It didn't really go away. It's there. You just can't see it because it's exactly the same as the background. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to move it. You can see it now. And I just lit your candle. 
Oh my. And uh, and then I'll duplicate that. So I'll click over here, right click in the layer and duplicate it. And I'll put it over there. And then I will uh, duplicate one more time. Now you'll find something interesting here. I move it here. It doesn't completely do the candle if you look at it closely. That's because that candle's in the foreground, it's bigger. So you have to do Control T on a PC and I'll pull these out a little bit and it made it bigger. And now I'll duplicate this layer And now we've got our candles are lit. That's magic. <laughs> it's all magic. <laughs> that's really amazing. Okay, that's cheating. Yeah. Uh, that's, we all are at number X. <laughs> that's right. Okay, now uh, if you look over in the layers panel, you can see all these layers, which are the lights, mm -hmm. uh, the candles, I mean. Let's go back to our original layer, which is the house. And I'm going to do something that, since we have a low res, and because it was at night, I'm going to blow this up. You see all the pixelization yeah. here? Yeah. OK. We can help that a little bit. And we're going to help it by, I'm going to take that entire, well, actually, no, I won't take the entire thing. I'm going to do select subject again so that I can do the house. And I'm not gonna bother to do everything, but, and then we'll uh, enlarge it so we can see. And then I'm gonna go back to filter, camera raw, which is develop module. And I'll make this much bigger. And here's the texture. I'm going to reduce texture, which makes it a little bit blurry, you would think. So you have to kind of know uh, how come it's not showing anything. Oh, there it goes. OK, so I reduced the texture quite a bit, like 50%. And it smoothed out some of that. And it looked better once we say OK. And, and go back. What if we tried denoise on that? You could, but this is a JPEG. And, uh, right. Okay, yeah. And Topaz, you can use denoise, and uh, it improves JPEG somewhat. But if this was the raw file that you shot, Steve, mm -hmm. that Photoshop does a hell of a job with it. Okay. So you can use that for denoise. All right, so the last thing that we can choose to do or not do is, I'm gonna go back to camera raw again, and I'm not gonna select anything this time. I'm just gonna go back. And the intention is to hit vignette. And you may have heard, Ber Bernie is a big vignette guy. Yeah. And Ansel Adams did it 80 or 90% of the time. If you look at carefully at his images, you'll see there are darkened corners. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a vignette and say, OK. And the reason being is just to get that house to jump out even more, right? Right. And now we can show. OK, the other thing you may want to do is I'm going to select all of these layers on the right here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to hit merge layers. So it's just one thing now. And that way I can click off of this and say, there's your original image. There's the new image. That's uh, much more dramatic. A little more dramatic. I mean, it, it's still a great 
I mean, the way you shot it, Steve, is still great. Uh, but this makes it a little more dramatic and a little dark later at night, looks like maybe, or right. And and the candles are lit. That's the most important thing. <laughs> well, you know, and I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't hesitate to take credit for in, for lighting each one of those individually with a with a match. <laughs> yeah, okay. that, that's the way this was done. This was that's the way it looked in the camera. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's that's beautiful. Love yeah. That. So this is on Lupton. If anybody cares, it's it is a nice house. Yeah. Oh, okay. You live in uh, Willow Glen, Will? Yeah. It's not your house, is it? And <laughs> not on that street. <laughs> I'm on the other side. <laughs> is other that side of the tracks from there? Is that one of the houses that's on the Christmas tour where a million cars are? Oh uh, yeah. yeah, that whole area is. Yeah. That whole area. Yeah. yeah, you have to be very careful walking, uh, walking around the street area because people are looking are not looking at the at the street. And yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Well, they're staring at the lights and run over you. Yeah, I found it years ago because they've been doing it for a long time, but. Uh, I tried to go there a couple of years ago and it was insane. So I'm yeah. not doing that anymore. Yeah, it's best to do it, I think, early in this early in the season. You may not have as many houses fully decorated, but uh, you don't have the the you know the the, the traffic jam. Yeah, yeah, we parked about six blocks away and walked in. It wasn't bad. No, oh, yeah, walking is probably a better way. We tried to drive, but that was a mistake. It's, it's insane. <laughs> yeah. So Eric, I noticed you um, deleting all those guides in the view menu. There's a clear guides command that takes them all away at once. Yeah, uh, I'd have to go and and uh, and go up to the. It's in window or no? It's in view. Yeah, it's in view, and you can say guides and lock them clear. in place. Well, or clear them. Clear yeah, I, so, yeah, I don't have any up there right now, so I can't clear anything. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so with this with this image, there's still a little parallax, right? The house is fading back on both sides. Uh, I the house looks curved. It's not a curved front. The, it's, it's not curved. Yeah, the so, the, so the, the panorama created the curves. Yeah, th that's a panorama, and I can't fix that. Well, that's that's that was going to be my question. Is there a way to fix that? Well, sort of. So now that you've challenged me, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know where the house is, so you know. Yeah. So you go to filter, liquefy, and this is going to bring up the house in a separate dialog box. And I'm going to take this size way up uh, to not quite that far. Okay, I'm going to take that up to about there. Now, if you look at on the upper left on the tools, there's a forward warp tool. We don't want to do that. Reconstruct, no. Smooth, no. Twirl, no. Pucker or bloat. So we want to pucker the building. So I got to move that back up on the size. OK. So I'll go a little bit bigger. Okay, let's see if let's let's just see if this will do that. So what you do is you center it on the area that you want to deal with, and you want the whole thing in this case, and you click and hold the left click on the mouse. So here goes. Not too bad. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Are these flat or do these go back on the side? Oh, it's straight across the front, I think. Those are too? Yeah. yeah. Well, they look like there's three windows, right? That go kind of uh Yeah, I think Oh, they're the windows they're bay, are bow they're bay, windows. It's like, it's like a bay window, I think. Yeah. yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. It's a bow window. Yeah. A bay window, but the brick is in a plane. Okay. So it also bowed these columns now. Right. Uh, but let's see if it'll back up. 
Okay. Yeah, it's going to be tough to do it without bowing those columns, but I can try. That's about as much as I dare, but that's pretty good. Interesting. Okay, so it is within range. Yeah. Uh, it also affected the the front doors a little bit. They look like they're falling backwards a little bit. Uh, but no one would know except for us. So what were you holding down when you held that circle over the front of the house? So I just... I just used the mouse click left, left mouse click, click okay. and I had to hold it until I thought it was going too far or not far enough. And, uh, but that's what it does. Yeah. And it works great for retouching people too, by the way. It's got all these face aware liquefy. So if someone's got one eye that's closed, you can change the eye size uh there's another tool in uh the neural filters which actually puts an eye in there which yeah. is kind of weird but this one will just if it's open halfway it'll open it up the rest of the way and it's a left and right eye i can't see it right now because you guys are i can see you guys but uh oh maybe i can move it there we go okay so now i can see over here so you have a right and left eye, it won't affect this image, but if you had a face, it would do all these things to tilt, uh, smile, upper lip, lower lip, mouth width, height, oh, okay. nose, by the way. This is all under liquify. That's all under liquify. And it, you have to play with it, takes a while. And, uh, uh, you have to get permission from your spouse to fix them. <laughs> <laughs> About uh, five years ago, my wife saw a picture that I took of her and she said, all right, I know I've said our entire marriage that I don't want you to ever fix my pictures, but it's okay now. <laughs> <laughs> so I can fix her now. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? One more quick thing and then we should quit, but uh, unless there's other questions, other challenges will. I'm going to try to fix those front doors. Now I'm using the bloat tool, so I'm going the opposite way. I'm not puckering, I'm bloating. Yeah, so it improved those doors. Not, mm -hmm. perfect. not perfect, but it's it's better. And that would be liquefy. Wow. So, okay. so outrageous amount of power then. Yeah. yeah. So Eric and yeah. um, uh, the Adobe camera rod, do you have transform? Do you make the transform? Oh, it's yeah. not, oh, camera rod. No, it doesn't have the same power as Photoshop to do that. There I is, thought, a, there is yeah. a transform tool there. That's true. But I don't know if you can do skew and all the other things. Could you just open it up and let me just take a look and see what I haven't used it in. I've used it a lot in. Um, yeah. See if there's a transform. Uh, let me move this. I think you have to go down. It's first. it's over. It's over here. It's one. Uh, of no, no. Yeah. Move Move the. Um, Elevator uh, down Pull a little down. farther. There's some things missing. Optics. Optics. Optometry, Optics. Maybe. Geometry. Yeah, yeah, there's no there's no transform in here though. Uh, you can distort it. Uh, yeah, that's geometry. Not it. Try geometry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I my understanding is they were pretty similar. Manual transformations, vertical. Yeah, so there you got vertical, horizontal, but it doesn't look like it has an auto like Lightroom does. 
No. Or uh, like photo. Uh, right. Light room. You and all that. What you do. Yeah, Lightroom has an auto which would look at that image and straighten the whole thing up. Yeah. Well, you can you can do that. You can try that. But we've added liquify and other things. But yeah, I, I know you've already. I, I just wanted. I haven't used this before. I thought it was identical because I've seen a couple of analysis and they say that the two of them are the same, but this is obviously has different titles. Yeah, and 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 it does it automatically, and I want to do it manually. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it does oh, say manual, manual transformation. You know, what does that do? Oh, uh, let's see. It gives you a vertical. There you go. That's pretty close. Yeah, there's no skew, uh, which is my go-to tool because I have to fix, you know, when you're using different lenses and you're too close, et cetera, et cetera. Well, actually, I, uh, when I do it manually, um, oops, no, <laughs> it's vertical. That's just rotating. Yeah. Hello. Um, vertical and horizontal uh, do a lot. Skew is a combination of a bunch of those, right? Uh, yes. You have, you have to play with it, but that's getting close. Um, I've done a bunch of uh, corrections on, on aspects on buildings. I've used a lot in Lightroom, and sure, uh, sure. these, these things actually, are actually pretty yeah, interesting. A building would be great for this. There's an auto mode in there where you just hit it, and it, and it sometimes solves it for me. But, yes. All right. So I you've satisfied my curiosity. It is there. Okay. All right. I'm going to cancel that. Jim, would you be kind enough to send me a copy of the uh, finished uh, finished product, your finished product that you did? This one? Uh-huh. Sure, sure. Maybe delete my uh, copyright on there, if you would. <laughs> um, I'll have to clone it out, but I can do that. Okay. Be great. Thank you. I got this off of our website, and our website automatically puts... Oh, is that right? Yeah, it puts your name on there. Now, um, so if if you click on, for example, anything on the website, an image, and you click on the larger version of it, not just a little thumbnail, it automatically puts a copyright in there. So someone can't, well, they could grab it. I could grab it, and I'll make that Stephen Green go away. But uh, there are a lot of people who would like to make Stephen Green go away. <laughs> <laughs> A long so, list. <laughs> don't uh, don't uh, don't bother them. Don't worry about that. Uh, no, it's it's easy. It, it only takes a minute to do. Sounds like we ought to take an insurance policy out on you. <laughs> Actually, you know, just for fun, anybody that wants to stay, I'll do it while we uh, while we're sitting here. Does it only take a minute? So this is the clone tool over here. Mm -hmm. Uh, opacity 100%, size is 48, which is fine. I'm going to take a piece of this bush right here and I'm going to click on it because it gives me a line to follow. And I'll grab another piece. You have to do this slowly. You can, there are, you can just jump in there and do it, but it's not going to be pretty. So, <laughs> and you push. You find an area that you want to duplicate. You're going to clone this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clone these leaves right here. And you click Alt. And then it uses that as the source. And now I'm going to go grab some lawn. And I'll try not to get too many leaves. And once I get enough lawn area here, I can go a little faster. So what copyright? That's right. You what watermark, was that? You watermark, I take away. Now the lawn has a bare spot where there should be leaves. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, there you go. I have a few leaves. With you. <laughs> I can do that. All right, let's fix the green. The hardest part is going to be where this ribbon is. Yeah. One of my previous life projects was we had an invisible watermark. I'm going to get rid of this leaf on top here because it'll make it easier for me to do this. And when you're trying to blend things together, which I'm, I'll, I will do this in a second here. Uh, what you have to do then in that case is you sometimes have to reduce the amount of opacity in order to get two things to blend well. Actually, I think I'm going to be okay. Make it bigger. And I'm going to use a small brush size. And if this was a higher pixel image, that was really sharp, then I would use my hardness to match the sharpness of the image. But this is not that sharp an image just because it was at night, A, and B. Like I said, I took it off the website, so. I might have to look at the other bow on the other side to see how it is. So I can come over here and choose this. And then I'll come back over here. And I'll draw it in. Are you not trusting AI to do your bow for you? <laughs> no. I'm using EI, Eric Intelligence, instead of. <laughs> A lot of times that's better, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, AI has some interesting things that are going to be great. And they have a lot of things that are just scary stupid. So That's amazing there. There you go. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I will save it as a JPEG since it was a JPEG and give it back to you. And once again, there's the original. And there's the new version. So you could, I could spend another 15, 20 minutes in uh, liquefy, I'm not going to do that, but I could fix that door so it would be not have any issues either. But you can show your neighbor. <laughs> well, uh, he might, uh, he might not be happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that I took that. But anyway. Okay. Any more questions? Anyone? No, this was good. Yeah, that's fine. Thank the vignette in the sky on the left is a little much. The pink or the vignette? The vignette is a little much. It, it is a little much. And here you go. We'll take the opacity. Remember I was talking about that? And I'm going to bring the opacity down to maybe that's less. Because you can, you can build on it if you want to. And I'm going to do a bigger size and a hardness on skies you always want the hardness to be low as possible because it's not in focus really so i'm going to come up here choose that as a source and i'm going to come over here and i'm going to reduce that oops picked up something else hmm. Some of the lights. I'm picking up the edge of the roof because I have a very 
because it has such a soft edge to it, it's, so you think you're just cloning right here, but it actually is picking up from that roof over there. Mm -hmm. The harder it is, the narrow the spot that it's going to take. So with, so with soft, it goes broader? Yes. Oh, okay, that's good to know. And I can also take the dodge tool maybe and go in the shadows and reduce those down a little bit. There we go. Maybe even less. How's that, Betty? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for being here tonight. And uh, Steve, I will send you this picture. Thanks, Eric. Really appreciate it. All right. Okay, Steve, I have one question. What's the second line on your t-shirt? Oh, <laughs> there's only one line. Just this. Oh, no, it says Mountain Resort, Sundance. It says all men are created equal. Then there's a all line underneath me. that. Uh, it says, uh, but the best can... But, but the best can still ride bicycles in their 70s. <laughs> uh, well, when you're in your 70s, you can tell us about bicycles. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll let, let you know when I hit my 70s. Okay. I'll, uh, <laughs> the next time around. All right. We'll see everybody in a month. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Great Bye. session, Eric. Thank you. Great session. You're welcome.